Hey everyone, this is Jason Brooks from Friday the 13th Vengeance. I play Jason Voorhees, and you're watching Slasher Pepper. Enjoy! <laughs> hey guys, Slasher Pepper here, and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be interviewing Jason Brooks from Friday the 13th Vengeance, among other projects. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Glad to have you on the show. Um, oh, so my first... Yeah, you're welcome. So my first question was, um, do you have any new projects coming up in the future? Yeah, so there's a couple projects I have going on. Um, it's been a little slow with the whole pandemic thing, but we're doing, right now we're working on something called uh, Covert 19. It's, it's kind of an online movie being made right now. And one of my characters from Vengeance, Louie, the hillbilly, he's going to be in that one as well. Um, so... Uh, it's put together by a, a group of people, Angie Ferraro and um, Alexi. She's they they're working on another project called Park Dead that I'm also in, and uh, which is put on hold right now for filming because of the same same circumstances. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to be doing some some at home filming and kind of putting it together for some fun. Awesome, sounds cool. Um, can't wait to see the return of Louis because that was one of my favorite parts in. Uh... Friday the 13th Vengeance. That was so funny. <laughs> um, so how did you get into acting? Uh, so many years ago, I had a friend named Todd Redinas who runs TBR Video. And he he was looking for a graphic designer to do some posters. And this is back 2004, 2003. So I did some posters for him. And then he started inviting me to movie sets. I came out and started helping him. And then kind of started getting little side parts in it and helping him co-direct. And then I took a break for a long time. And about three years ago, he came back and he's like, hey, I'm making a new film. Um, it's called Attack of the Handface People. I want you to come and help me co-direct it. And so uh, I was like, what's this Attack of the Handface People? <laughs> he, like, he sent me the script and I read it and I'm like, wow, he's either really stupid or brilliant. I'm not sure which one, you know, it's like, this is crazy. How is this gonna make sense? And, and it was obviously on the brilliant side, um, but we went out and had some fun with that. Um, and it's uh, a Night of the Living Dead kind of a homage to that, and, but comedy. And that kind of gave me the bug. So I, I wrote another film called Happy Trails, started working on that one, and um, started getting another few parts again. So we got back into it. And then the Friday the 13th Vengeance opportunity came up. So uh, once I did that, it all kind of opened up and more acting opportunities came up to me. Awesome. And how would you like to see yourself grow within the movie business within the next few years? Oh, yeah. I, so what I would really love to do is play more monsters. Um, you know, being a big guy, 6'5", uh, 240, 245, I, I love, I don't know, I just love being the monster. Having the mask on, face covered, that's my favorite. Um, I've been getting a few, a few offers for uh, face roles, lead roles. And while I'd love to try that and kind of expand my my acting chops, I, I still prefer the kind of the monster covered up um, kind of thing. And, and there's a few potential opportunities that are still out there that I think could be really huge. So once this is all over and the world kind of comes back together, if those opportunities are still available, uh, hopefully you'll be hearing more from me. So. Awesome. And uh, about your physical shape, how do you stay in such physical shape? Do you work out much uh, or do you do anything with food and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. So um, right now with, with everything kind of staying home, I'm, I'm gaining a little bit of weight. So I need to get those gym, get the gym back. But before that, uh, yeah, I, I have a gym here where I live. I would go there every day. Prior to that, for 15 years, I was going to the gym and um, started getting shape. Around the time 300, the movie 300 came out, um, that kind of inspired me to go get in shape, just like a lot of other people, men in the world. So I started going to the gym regularly at that time and just kind of kept that going. And over the last few years, took a little bit more seriously, started bulking up a little bit. And then um, once I got the Friday the 13th role, I really wanted to um, continue some more. So, and then right after that, with some of the other potential opportunities, um, needed to get back and hit it harder. So it's, uh, it's all weightlifting, weight training, um, and then eating at the right times to, to not gain too much weight and, and fat and slim down. So, uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to the gym. Yeah, me too, man. I was like finally getting into it and, and, and 
like once a week what I used to do. But then they closed down, so got to get pick up uh, again after this whole pandemic is over. Uh. So how long did it get for you to um, get into the makeup of Jason Voorhees? Oh, that was that's not too bad. Um, the the hood I wear is silicone. It's one it's silicone one piece, so it just kind of slides right on. Um, for some scenes, I need to have black on my eyes and mouth and and whatnot, so that way you don't see skin. So, but to get the full costume on, it's probably about 10, 10 to fifteen minutes to get it on right and and get going because there's so many different layers and pieces to it, and uh, and then getting it all together in the right place is right. Be, not not too bad. No, not bad at all. I was like expecting two to three hours because it looks amazing. Oh, thank you. I thought they had to like sculpt everything and stuff. I I had no idea it was a hood. Yep, it's a it's a amazing hood. Well, um, CFX masks made it, and it was a custom custom piece for us. So they made two of them. Um, one was purchased by our executive producer Don Shell, who had a small scene as Jason in the film, and the other one I have and um, and have on a mannequin here. Uh, but oh, awesome. yeah, one piece, one piece hood that slips right on. So the technology for for that's pretty amazing these days. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Um, and what was your favorite scene to film out of uh, Vengeance? Oh man, so my favorite scene to film. There's there's a couple. Um, one of them that stands out is the Heather kill, where I grab her by the neck, pick her up, slam her down, and smash her head with a pickaxe. Uh, that one was done on my birthday. Um, and so while I'm filming that, C.J. Graham, he, uh, who plays Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th Part 6, and also Elias Voorhees in Vengeance, he came out early to set, um, a couple days early, to surprise me for my birthday. So while in the middle of filming that, we took a break. We went back into the uh, green room there and and he was there waiting for me and they had a cake and everything. And so then he came out and watched me do the rest of that scene. So he watched me perform that kill. So I was a little bit of pressure at first, like, oh my God, we have we have uh, Jason Borges. <laughs> Ram is here watching me play Jason. That was pretty big and pretty epic. And, and so anyway, I finished that scene and became my favorite kill anyway uh, of the movie. But also another favorite scene of mine was um, not really playing Jason in there, but I actually stood in as Elias for he's um, in. We went to film Steve Dash's part. He lived in Florida and we had a small skeleton crew and CJ was not available or able to go fly down to Florida. So the scene where Elias kills Steve's character, uh, that's me. That's me. He's dressed up as Elias. So nice. Now, being being able to have the honor to work with Steve in that way was was pretty cool. Yeah, sounds great. Um, and what's the best behind the scenes story? Uh, you already kind of gave one with the uh, birthday thing, uh, but besides that one. Uh... Oh, there's one, there's a really good one that I can't really tell yet. It's gonna be on the DVD and Blu-ray, which is coming out really soon. So it's a little bit of a surprise, um, but it has to do with the, the final end scene where CJ and I are facing off, uh, Elias and Jason, and he lifts up the mask. Um, so watch for that in the deleted scenes and the behind the scenes. That's, uh, it'll be pretty fun. It's pretty funny. Awesome. We'll check it out. Um, and I mean, I better ask the producer, of course, because he probably knows more than you do. Uh, but will there be a Friday the 13th Vengeance 2? Yeah. So that's something that we're still talking about. Um, you know, it took a year and a half, almost two years of our time in our lives and it's really kind of a full-time job to put something together at that scale but it's definitely you know we're all interested the fans are interested we get asked daily um you know is there going to be a part two so uh, i know that we as fans and we also like the movie obviously we put it together and you know it's a story that we want to see we do want to see that continue there's so much more to tell there's so much from vengeance one that carry it would carry over to part two that would answer some of those questions in part one so I think that if the planets align and everything comes together and we can get that out there, we would all love to be a part of it and, and do that. So um, we'll just have to see if those things come together. Right, right. Well, it's great to know that at least you were talking about it. So, uh, oh, so yeah. it's not, not out of the question. Uh, and what's your own personal favorite Friday the 13th movie and why? Sure. So this one for me, I would say part six. Because I like I like the mix of humor. 
I like the the kills, um, CJ's performance, but I also like three and four. You know, so there's a lot. I, it's it's funny with with this question. You know, I get it kind of often, and and it's always really hard to choose because I like certain things from different movies. Same with Star Wars. You ask me, what's your favorite Star Wars movie, or what's your favorite? You know, it's it's hard to choose because I like elements strongly from each one. So um, it's that's tough. But if I go back to watch one, it's typically Parasitics. Right, right. And what's your uh, what would you say is your least favorite one? Least favorite, I would say Part Nine. Um, not because it wasn't well done, you know, and I admire their and and respect their uh, effort to try something new and different. But you know, I, I did miss seeing Jason with the kills and and watching other people do it. It just didn't feel like Friday the Thirteenth. It was still a good movie, and it was still had some amazing kills to it. And and well put together, but there's some things in there that I'm just, if I was seeing Jason do it, I think it would have uh, been good, but no right, fault. Right. No, they did a great job. Um, but, yeah. Okay. Um, and what other slasher character would you love to play? Oh, a few. I would love to play Michael Myers. Um, I would love to play the Toxic Avenger. I would love to play... Um, uh, Darth Vader, you know, not he's not a slasher, but he's another iconic character. Right. That I, but I think Michael Myers, Toxic Avenger are on the top of my list. Awesome. And uh, what are some of your own favorite horror films? Oh man, I, I don't know if it's, I mean, it's kind of horror, but what we do in the shadows, I don't know if you've oh, seen that. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie so much. Um, I just keep going back to it, watch it. I laugh every time, find something new every time. Um, embarrassing how many times I've watched it, but, uh, <laughs> and, uh, what else? 13 Ghosts. I like that one. Um, saw that one in the theater a long time ago and that was fun. Cabin in the Woods. Um, but yeah, in, in the Halloween series, Friday the 13th right, right. Big series, all those obviously. So. A lot of pretty modern ones. Usually, uh, uh, when I interview people, they tend to go back to like the '50s, even or the '80s, uh, sort of horror movies. Oh yeah. So that's interesting. I think um, it's like, you know, when you grow up in in the '80s, um, and you have those, you know, you have your first experience with some of those things, and and they stick with you. So like right. the first, you know, I was eight years old, and it was on Halloween being babysat by someone else while the parents were all out doing a Halloween party somewhere. And so that was my first horror movie ever was Halloween. And it, it got to me, you know, pretty good there. And then the next one I saw was Children of the Corn. And it just started, you know, it affected me as a young age. So those all kind of have a special place for me as, as kind of my introduction. And then growing up on Nightmare on Elm Street and everything, it just good memories, good, good, uh, good times. So I think that's why they kind of stand out. Right, right. Um, and I saw Attack of the Hand Face people, and I and I thought it was really cool. <laughs> oh, thank um, you. Do, do you think there will be uh, some sort of return of the Hand Face people? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I could talk to them and see. I I know that we all had a good time doing it. It was just ridiculous, and and we like to have fun. So right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what more we could tell. But right, it's, uh, exactly. And it's interesting. That was the first time I met Nick Strong. Um, we, it was shown at the Seattle Crypticon Film Festival out here. And I happened to, that, that film was in there. And I had to stand up in front of everyone after they played all the movies. All the film creators went up and they went up for Q&A. So the audience could ask questions. And the first question asked was Nick Strawn, where he raised his hand. And um, Nick Strawn, if, for those who don't know, he was the, the art director and designer for Nightmare on Elm Street 3, 4, Blade, Leatherface, Candyman. Um, he worked in Hollywood for decades and has worked on amazing films. So he's responsible for a lot of the, the visual things in these horror movies that you guys all love. Um, and he was in the audience. And so he raised his hand and he's like, I got a question for that guy. Who did you guys just make up for Attack of the hand Face people? You know, and obviously no makeup. There's people running around. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first time. And from that point on, 
um, you know, he was good friends with the director from Vengeance, and so he came on and was a big part of, of Vengeance, too. He, our assistant director and uh, assistant director and art director as well, so um, production designer. So we got lucky there, but it's kind of fun how it all came together. Right, right, just full circle. Yeah. Uh, so do you have any final words for the interview? No, I don't think so. Um, uh, let's see. I mean, if you want to see, if you watched Vengeance, you like it, you want to see more, um, check out Up All Night, a film by, uh, written by Matt Shaw. Um, Jeremy Brown, director of Vengeance, he directed it. Uh, I'm in it. Uh, Louis returns in that movie as well. Uh, so it's a, it's a fun, fun little short Nightmare on Elm Street film. And Mick Strawn, of course, who worked on Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4, helped, helped put this together as well. So uh, everything I've heard so far has been good, good feedback, so go check that out. Um, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, the Jason Brooks Official, Friday the 13th, or F13 Vengeance fan page. Check all those out if you want to see more and, and uh, find me on there. Awesome. So you heard it. Go check them out on social media and go watch Up All Night. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching the interview, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. See ya. Thank you. You're pissing me off, Roger. It's gonna be wild tonight.